Hello, hello, beautiful people. Mel Daniels here. I hope that you are well today. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to be here. I hope that you've been enjoying Sarah's new year party as much as what I have. I know that I've been learning a lot, so I'm really excited to bring this training to you as part of the new year party. So today we're going to be talking about content and I know how overwhelming content can be for so many people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a super simple framework, a super simple framework that you can use right now to make sure that you go into 2024 feeling confident and in control and have some traction, gain some momentum when it comes to your content creation. So today we're talking about reducing your content overwhelm. And like I said, that super simple framework that's going to help you become more consistent, more confident and visible as well. But hey there, if we haven't met before, I'm Mel Daniels. I am your people-loving, process-driven, inquisitive content marketing strategist and bubbly lover, which is kind of appropriate right now, seeing we are having a new year party. I am also a podcast host of the Powerful Content Podcast and a brand new spanking author of The Power of Content, which will be published uh, next month, which is rather exciting. So stay tuned for that. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, LinkedIn as well. I would love to connect with you. So what are we going to cover today in this super quick training? I'm going to give you three quick wins, three things that you can do right now, here, today, implement so that you can start reducing that feeling of overwhelm with your content because it's a real thing. I know it's a real thing and so many people experience it. I'm going to bust some myths. I love to bust some myths. So I'm going to get to the bottom of some contenty untruths, get them out of the way so that we can move on. I'm going to talk about why it's feeling so overwhelming for you, why we feel like it's such a burden and so hard and so difficult. I'm going to give you a few common reasons why we often give up, but then I'm going to give you the solution, the super simple framework. We'll be covering off the four Ps that will make content creation so much easier for you and have you creating content like nothing else in 2024. But before we do that, let's talk about the possibilities. What could life look like for your business? You already know these things. You already know that creating content is important for your business, right? So when we're consistent, we become more visible, which equals more sales. But in knowing that, we often feel overwhelmed by hashtag all the things, the all the shoulds that are being thrown at us. Like we should be on Pinterest. We should be doing more on LinkedIn. We should be writing a blog. We should have a podcast. All of those things can contribute to us feeling a little bit overwhelmed with it all. You already know that you need to show more of you. I know that you know that. And you probably are creating content, but might be a little bit sporadic at the moment. And I know that you've been have started building an audience as well. But just imagine, just imagine for a moment that you could stop wasting valuable time creating content that doesn't resonate with your beautiful ideal client. Just imagine that you could create content quickly and easily and show up with consistency and confidence Increase your reach with powerful and purposeful content and create an aligned community that just fills your heart with joy and is ready to buy from you. Imagine that. I want you to know that you can do that. You can overcome that feeling of overwhelm that we often feel when it comes to creating content. And I'm going to show you how to do it today. I'm a little bit excited about that. But let's talk about three super quick wins that I can give you that you can implement right now if you are feeling overwhelmed. But a word on overwhelm first. What is it? Overwhelm is actually something that we often place on ourselves. It's a pressure that we placed on ourselves to perform or do certain things a certain way. But do you know what? You get to decide what to do and what not to do. You, you and nobody else. You get to make that decision and you get to write the story about how you feel about creating content as well. So I know that a lot of people have these thoughts of, I have to do this. I've got no time to create content. I should be doing something else instead. I'm so overwhelmed. Are they thoughts that you have with creating your content? I'm sure that they are. I even have them at some stage as well. But when you switch that narrative, when you switch that story, 
and create new thoughts around creating content, it becomes easier. I get to change someone's life with this piece of content. There's plenty of things to do, but I choose my focus. I get to ask for help and be kind to myself on your way. Can you see how by simply switching your thoughts and and saying things a little bit differently, you can possibly decrease your overwhelm, especially when it comes to content. But here, in the meantime, are three quick wins, three things that you can implement, understand and change your perspective about today in order to reduce the overwhelm of your content. So in the corner there, I've got a QR code and this will take you to my amazing quiz (laughs) that will actually unlock your content creator archetype. And this is the first thing that I talk about. When you work with your strengths, know what it is that you love to do, how you love to create things, how you like to show up in this world and work with them rather than against them, then you can kiss that overwhelm goodbye. So when we kind of put these restrictions on ourselves in order to do things a certain way, then it becomes really hard and burdensome. So the first thing I want you to do is understand how you like to create content and work with your strengths rather than against them. The second thing is around your time, your energy and resources. Now, I talk about this a lot because once we acknowledge and accept that we have a limited amount of time, energy, and resources, then everything is going to change for you. So if I think about myself, my past self 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even before I had children, it's a very different time, energy, and resources than what I had when they were little and what I have now, now that they're teens. So these things in my life change over time. And I know that in future, things will be even more different as well. But I acknowledge and I accept that. And I understand that I have boundaries around those time, energy and resources. And the minute that I step outside those boundaries, I know that I'm going to feel overwhelmed. So I acknowledge and I accept that. And then the last thing is you don't have to do hashtag all the things. You really don't. Let go of the shoulds and run your own race. And I think that this is so important because when we receive all of these messages from all of these people out there, all of who are experts in their own field saying that you should be doing this thing, then that becomes so overwhelming because if we try and do all the things, we're going to end up doing none of them very well. And I don't want that for you. I want you to shine. So let's make sure that we're not doing hashtag all the things. Just choose those one or two things that where you love to show up that are really within your strengths, your wheelhouse and go with those and those only. So now that we know about overwhelm, let's talk about some myths. Let's bust some myths about uh, overwhelm, about content creation. The first is that there is a right way and a wrong way to do content. Hmm. Um, that's not true. <laughs> I really want you to do content your way. So there, like I said, there are no shoulds when it comes to con- content creation. There are no shoulds whatsoever. It's really about you, how you love to show up, how you want to be in this world and who you want to be in this world as well. It's not about right. It's not about wrong, but it is about doing what feels easy for you. And when you do things that feel easy, then that is obviously going to reduce your overwhelm. It's really understanding you, all the things about you, all the beautiful, unique things, all the experiences, the knowledge that you bring to the table before you create content for the who, for your ideal client. Okay, so when we talk about content marketing, a lot of people really focus on the who, the ideal client. You know, you have to create content for them. You have to know who they are. Yes, you do. But until you really understand who you are as a person and are willing to show up as that person, then content creation is going to be so hard and overwhelming for you. The second myth is that I need to constantly create new content. And that's not true either. Using amazing processes, including the power of reimagination, this really helps you talk about the same topic, the same piece of content in lots of different ways across different platforms. So we all know that people need to hear the same message over and over again, the same information several times 
before they're actually willing to purchase from you. And depending on who you talk to, it could be, you know, anywhere between eight and 15 times that they need to come across you and hear that message over and over again. So it's not about creating new content. It's about using what you've got more wisely. Now, the third myth is only people with a team can be successful content creators, okay? So only people who have other people who can write for them, who can schedule for them, who can do all the things for them can be successful with their content. And that is untrue as well. So a team may help, but it's not everything. It's not the be all and end all. It's more about your consistency, your version of consistency, using your entire ecosystem and showing up in that way that feels so easy for you. Because the moment that we choose the easy way and not the hard way, we're going to be able to reduce our overwhelm. So that's all about, you know, using the power of reimagination to your advantage. How can you repurpose, reuse that one piece of content in so many other different ways quickly and easily? And it's about finding your own groove, finding what works for you, what you love to do and working to that. So sometimes we hear that, you know, you need to, You should be, there's that word again, you should be emailing your list at least once a week or you should be uh, podcasting because it's a a great medium to reach uh, clients these days. Yes, it may be, but if that's not in your wheelhouse, it's not something that you love to do, not something that you uh, find easy to do and something that you can't be consistent with, then there's no point doing it. Now, the fourth myth is that I need to know how to beat the algorithm to be successful at content creation. Oh my goodness, I hear this so often, but that's not true because you know what? You'll never, ever master the algorithm. It changes so often and we can never, ever uh, predict exactly what's going to happen. So starting from that mindset, from that mindset of desperation is really the wrong energetic space because when you have a strong message, and you know exactly what you stand for, then algorithms mean nothing, right? So we don't have to try and master an algorithm because we are creating content that feels easy for us and that meets our beautiful ideal client where they are on that client journey with us. Now, the fifth myth is, "Mm, I've got nothing to say. (laughs) I know that so many people say this and they feel overwhelmed by the fact that they feel like they should be creating content, but they don't feel like they've got anything to say. And I want you to know that that's so not true. You have so much to share with the world. You are an absolute wealth of knowledge and experience. And I understand that staring at a blank screen can be difficult, especially when you've set aside time to sit down and create content. But I want you to know when you have a framework that I'm going to talk about very shortly in place to support you on this uh, content journey, then the actual creation process and hence your visibility as well becomes so much easier. It really does. So why does content creation feel like this? I want you to know firstly that content overwhelm is a real thing. You're not alone. You are not alone. But here's a few common reasons that I hear in my community, why people find content so overwhelming. It could be through a lack of confidence. It could be about not knowing where to start. And this is really important as well because you may have tried before and actually burnt out from doing all the things that you thought that you should be doing, hashtag all the things. You may not be using content in a powerful way. And when I use the word powerful with content, I'm talking about purposeful, strategic, with a meaning behind it. You may not have a strategy in place or you're unable to really articulate what you do or the transformations that you provide for your ideal client in a way that feels easy and fluid, or it could be a combination of all of these things, which could be likely as well. But the four most common reasons that you probably find content overwhelming of these. And I want you to think about, as I'm talking about these, which one most appeals to you at the moment or could be the most obvious reason why you're feeling like content is overwhelming at the moment. The first one is about not knowing what to say. So it's that lack of ideas or knowing exactly what your ideal client needs to hear, all the things that you could possibly talk about. We kind of end up staring at that blank screen and not knowing what to talk about. The second thing is that I hear is there's no time. 
you know, there's so many other things in your life. You've got a business to run. You've got all these other aspects of your business, the, you know, the finance side, selling, sales, all of these things that you need to think about. And you have a life as well, right? (laughs) We've got to fit that in somewhere as well. So if I'm serving, you know, my beautiful clients, how can I possibly find the time to create, let alone plan ahead, which is what I really encourage as well. So I've got no time, no time to do these things. And so therefore I feel overwhelmed with the fact that I've got all of these things to do. The third thing is not knowing where to start. And this is really about constantly creating new content and feeling like that you're reinventing the wheel over and over and over again. So there's no fluidity to what you're creating and there's no reasoning behind it either. And the last one is inconsistency. So if making time is so difficult, if I don't know what to say and I don't know where to start, how can I possibly be consistent and show up on a regular basis if I don't have all of these things available to me. So just have a think about one, two, three, or four, which one is contributing the most to your overwhelm when it comes to content at the moment? Why does it feel overwhelming for you? Okay, so now that we know this, now we know those four common reasons, let's talk about what you can actually do to solve the problem. Let's give you the four Ps. Let's work together so that we can give you a clear path that you can follow to help you become more consistent and more visible as well. Because reducing overwhelm is about those things. It's about consistency. It's about confidence, but it's about support. And that is what this framework will do for you is give you that support that you need. So have a think again, which number was making you feel overwhelmed? Now let's have a look at the content creation blueprint. So if you thought number one, was most contributing to your overwhelm at the moment, then I encourage you to prepare. So there is actually four parts to this framework. We start off with being prepared. We then go into a planning process. We produce our content and then put a process around it. So prepare is all about knowing all of the things that you could talk about, all of the things you could possibly talk about so that you can show up easily and quickly. A plan is knowing exactly what you need to create and when so that you can not only feel more in control, but you can be more strategic and purposeful with your content as well. So you're not just throwing that content spaghetti at the wall. Oh, I should post on Instagram today. I'll go and do a post. Oh, I should be over on LinkedIn. I'll do something else over on LinkedIn. We have a plan behind us. The third thing is produce. So this is how you can create an easy way to create your content. It's repeatable, it's easy to follow, and it's a great way to be able to share your knowledge. So we want to be able to create binge-worthy content for our ideal clients. So if you think Netflix star, where's that one place that you that your beautiful ideal client can go to in order to really understand what you talk about and what your message is and what makes you so different and unique in this world. And then the last P is process. So you have an efficient system in place that helps you be consistent, more efficient and leaves you more time for doing the things you love, whether that's other things in your business or whether that's things in your personal life as well. So that's the four Ps. So let's just quickly go through each of those four Ps individually. And the first one, remember, was prepare. So this is for you if you chose number one. This is about creating the time and space to brainstorm. It's about coming up with all your ideas with no judgment. Do not judge yourself. It's about building out your themes and your topics, your thought leadership, your message as well. And it's really about the things like how you deliver your service, who you do it to, why the outcomes. And it's an opportunity for you to start thinking strategically because once we know all of the things that we can talk about, we can then begin to slot them into our plan and lead our beautiful ideal client through a journey with us, but also be strategic in our own business as well. The next P, number two, was plan. So this is about knowing where to start and how to actually keep going as well. So if we think about taking small steps, becoming more consistent, rather than doing, you know, tracking all the things and doing all the things at once, if we can just start with one small thing. And I really encourage you, no matter what your content creator archetype, so if you did that quiz earlier on in this training, 
then you will know your archetype. There are some archetypes that don't love planning at all, specifically the free spirits. But if we can just think about planning as high level as we possibly can and work from there, then that is going to really give you the structure and the strategic way to move forward with your content. So when I talk about that, I'm talking about 90 day content planning is an absolute minimum, super easy, super high level. We actually do it inside my membership every quarter um, and it takes less than an hour to do. So really easy to do. This will help you stay on track and make you become far more powerful and it really helps your ideal client as well. Not only you to keep on track, to understand the, the path that you're actually taking, but it helps your ideal client as well. If you want to know more about planning and in particular how to plan your social media, then go and listen to episode eight of the Powerful Content Podcast when I talk about a simple social media plan that you can implement and it's so easy, you will wonder why you've never done it before. <laughs> so go and check that out. The third P was produce. Now, this is about creating more time in your life. So we're starting with core content. So that's a blog podcast or video. And we're beginning to use a repeatable system. We're using a consistent structure with our content. We're using a days, particular days. You know, you might book out a morning a week where you actually thinking about what you're going to produce and going ahead and producing it as well. And this bit helps you become far more consistent as well. And the last P is process. So this is about, so many people think that this is so boring, but this is the stepping stone to help prepare you and your business for outsourcing and scaling your content marketing as well. So I really encourage you, no matter what stage of business that you're at, that you start thinking about processes at the very beginning. So this is about writing or recording those steps that you do. So it could be through the written word. It could be just a voice recording. It could be a screen recording as you're going along. Any way that actually documents what you're doing. And then you can use the power of reimagination. And if you want to know more about that, you can go back to the Powerful Content Podcast, episode 10, I think it is, and learn about how to actually create more content in less time. So they're the four Ps. And it's not about creating more content. I really want you to remember that because if we think that we need to create more content, we're just going to send ourselves back into a space of overwhelm. It's really about finding aligned ways to make it easier for you. This journey, this entrepreneurial journey is about you. This content journey is about you. <laughs> so let's find those ways to implement this simple framework to help you on your journey. So if we go back to the earlier slide that we had in this training, you already know that it's important to create content, that we can get overwhelmed by having to do all the things, that you need to show more of you and create content consistently and have an audience. And now you can. Now you can do all of these things. You can stop wasting valuable time. You can create content quickly and easily and show up consistently as well. Increase your reach. Have an aligned community that fills your heart and is ready to buy with you simply because you now have a framework in place to help you do it. So I'd love you to think about right now, which of those four Ps needs to be your focus? I'm all about the action taking, not just the learning. So I would love to know which of those four Ps is the most important for you to master right now. And I want you to focus on that. That's it for this training. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, time with me. I really appreciate you being here. If you wish to continue the journey, I would love to hang out with you on socials. I am on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. You can find me. My handle is at Meld Business. Thank you so much for sharing this party with me. I am so grateful to be here and to be in front of you. I hope you enjoy the rest of the party.